So welcome to this next in a series of honoring artists who are exhibiting in the Smock Gallery. The Southwest Minnesota Arts Council is very honored to have Autumn Cavender in our gallery right now through June 17th. She had an in-person reception last week, which was June um, June 2nd, and that was attended by uh, many people who really appreciated and were enthralled with the work that Autumn has done. And so we are just excited to have her on the call with us. And this is being recorded so that we can share it on our Facebook page and on our website after the fact, so mm -hmm. that if some friends, family, and fans are not able to join us here tonight, that they can um, go ahead and watch it uh, later on. So that is why we're recording. Um, I would like to do uh, the formal intro, then I will pass it over to Autumn to maybe key up what we're going to see as far as a video. The video contains a look around the gallery at all of the walls of the exhibit, and there is um, some stock music behind it. And so we will just watch the video after Autumn has a chance to um, give her, her artist statement. And then after the video, we will open it up for questions or comments or other things that um, the artist might want to share about her work. So welcome, everybody. The generative quill work of Wichanhati Yotangwi. Quill work is a form of embellishment for many of the First Nations people across North America. Several techniques are employed, including embroidery, applique, and weaving, in order to create distinctive aesthetic elements. For Dakota people, quill work was a femme art gifted through dreams, family members, or through specific societies. For Wichanhati, the art of Dakota quill working is a link to the cosmological quill worker who weaves the fabric of reality and explores quill working as a generative powers to record, represent, and recreate the fabric of reality for our peoples. In her process of digital quill working, Autumn uses the visualizations of audio data to visually encode songs and stories into larger patterns and designs. These digital works can serve as the basis for color, pattern, and design selection for physical beadwork and quill work, but they are also beautiful in their own right as digital work. This exhibit experiments in the display of digital or generative quill work using projections, prints, and traditional items. So that was actually a description that Autumn provided to us. Um, and I am happy to have her fill in any blanks that I may have left out or um, had anything she she wishes before we jump into a video. Thanks, Autumn. We so appreciate you being with us. Thank you so much for having me. Um, so hello everyone. It's with a good heart that I I lost you. I'll bring my back. You're back now. Great. Okay. Well, try that again. Hello, everyone. <laughs> it's with a good heart. I greet all of you with a handshake. It's really lovely to see everyone here tonight. Um, thank you so much for coming out. Um, I I am Wakwetu and Dakota from the Upper Sioux Reservation, um, located in southwestern Minnesota. And um, I am a traditionally trained uh, porcupine quill worker. And so what that means is that I, I worked with elders through apprenticeship models 
um, in order to learn not just the technical aspects of porcupine quill work, um, but the, um, the aesthetic and the storytelling methodologies that are employed with porcupine quill work um, in order to create designs that are not just aesthetically Dakota, but still encode um, traditional cultural knowledge um, in the pieces that I've been doing. And so um, I primarily worked in florals for a very long time um, and um, was really, you know, really felt very, very proficient in them. Um, and so I started doing more research into uh, traditional geometrics. And the more and more people I talked to, the more people I realized uh, didn't act, you know, not many people that I, I talked to had a good handle on the creation of geometrics. Um, that many people were simply copying designs that they saw in museums or, um, you know, making things that kind of looked pretty and were aesthetically Dakota. And there's nothing wrong with either one of those things. Um, but for me, what I, I wanted to find a way to train my eye to see in geometrics in the same way that I could see in floral. So I can tell stories through floral, um, but I wasn't able to do that with geometrics. And so I was really searching for a way to to train my eye um, in, in like how to see the world in that way and translate it into design. And so um, actually COVID presented a unique opportunity. Um, I was sitting at home for a long time, uh, me and my husband, and we got really um, into NFT collecting um, and really looking a lot at digital and generative art in, um, on the whole. And, um, you know, we were kind of toying around with this idea of like, what, what would it mean to, to use generative technology and AI technology? My goodness, again. Okay. Can you all hear me now? Okay. Um, so um, really wanted to toy around with the idea of how to, how to use these technologies, if it was possible to use these technologies um, in order to help kind of train my eye. So it began kind of as an experiment um, and playing around with different tech, a lot of obsolete tech from the late 90s, um, actually, to try and find something that worked. And, um, you know, the way, uh, the way I started doing it was plugging audio files into these uh, generative programs um, and just kind of seeing what came out of it. And uh, there was a lot of stuff that was pretty. There was a lot of stuff that was not pretty. <laughs> there was a lot of stuff that was really pretty, but not aesthetically Dakota. There was a lot of stuff that was aesthetically Dakota, not super pretty and, and not really um, like super helpful in terms of seeing the sounds. Uh, but finally, um, it was actually through a piece that is on display that you'll see through the video. Um, the Zuya Odon, it's a war song um, from a 19th century wax recording, um, wax cylinder, or sorry, 18th century wax cylinder recording of a war song. And um, what came out of that generative process, um, you know, because the, the song is, is specifically about marching. It's about footsteps and, and marching off to war. And, um, you know, I, I put this song through this program and what came out was a footsteps pattern. Um, and I said, oh, well, this is interesting. <laughs> now we have something that's aesthetically Dakota, that's but that can actually be reverse engineered to reflect the audio file that is being plugged in. And so um, I kind of started experimenting, playing with different songs. Uh, what happened when I, I plugged just different sounds in and what came out? And um, that was really when I knew, um, when I had the proof of concept for this kind of artwork. Um, not only could I put a sound in and get something aesthetically Dakota that was, you know, pleasing to look at, but it was actually referential back to the audio from which it derived. Um, and so this was deeply exciting for me um, and started, you know, playing with a lot of different, uh, different aspects. And so um, there is one piece, Dakota Odonwa 141, which is the song that the condemned men sang um, in Mankato before they were hanged after the War of 1862. And, um, you know, you see these very beautiful uh, kapemini or kind of um, universe diagrams that are very common within, within Dakota art, um, water bird designs, and then these faces. Um, that appeared throughout the design. And so, um, you know, utilizing like other tech able to replicate that out. So now that there's 38 faces in that design. Um, 
another piece that for me was also like very, very interesting um, was uh, a much more recent one that I've done uh, called the strong, um, it's from the, uh, Sorry, let me back up. <laughs> it's called Strong Woman, um, but it comes from the Strong Women song that was composed um, in Kingston Prison in Ontario. It's a women's prison there. And it was um, composed by these women to sing to one another when they were in solitary confinement as a way to bring encouragement to each other um, and to, to talk to one another through, um, through the prison system. And um, it's a beautiful song. It's just an air, it's just a melody. So there's no actual words to it. Um, and so this one was very interesting to me as a case study, um, looking at it because you can almost, you can actually see blocks um, on either side of the piece coming down um, that they actually almost look like cell blocks um, with these like zigzag designs going in and touching each cell and backing, going back and forth. And so for me, that was a particularly fascinating, giving the origin of the song and the fact that there were no words for the program to draw from in order to create these designs. Um, one of my one of my favorite pieces, and it's probably the one that um, you know more broadly I'm I'm most well known for, is called Red Boning. And so um, that one, and then Ohutka on Genesis are really interesting because they are um, composed of amalgamations of sound, so um, several different sounds spliced together. Um, you know, kind of like DJ remixed, and and then run through the audio program. And so because um, because of the variations in tone, one of the ways that um, I can modify the designs that come out is by assigning each tone or each pitch a color. And that's what gives you the color patterns um, throughout the song. But when you have multiple different audio recordings coming with multiple different pitches, multiple different tones, we create these very intense multicolored pieces. Um, and I really love red boning in particular um, because each aspect, you, you know, you can kind of see each part of the audio file as it progresses, um, which gives you like, again, these like really cool visuals. Um, but then, you know, there's, there's images in there that directly relate to the content of the songs and audio file that they come from, which was really, really cool for me. Um, so yeah, in this exhibit, um, I kind of have a, and, and oh, okay, and so then one of my more recent uh, things now is, you know, the original purpose behind all of this tech was to be able to create um, patterns for myself to quill. And so that's actually the next stage of this work now is I have these beautiful patterns and I'm now making physical quill work pieces to accompany each one that are inspired or based off of um, the, the designs found um, in the generative quill works themselves. So in this exhibit, um, there's, um, I, I've kind of been describing this exhibit more or less as an experiment. Digital artwork doesn't actually really exist in any kind of physical form, right? It exists in the, in the cloud, in this very ethereal space. And so um, how we display digital work is an ongoing conversation within the digital community. Um, what, is, what is a display? What is the original um, versus like what is a copy? Um, and so in this, um, in this exhibit, I, I play with a couple of different ways of displaying digital quill work. So the, um, one of the ways um, that both Ohutka Genesis and Red Boning are displayed is through projection in a way to um, mirror and mimic the um, kind of ethereal nature of digital art. So like the projection is, is light, right? It's not really here or there and it can't be held in your hand. Um, it was really important to me to project uh, generative quill work onto bison hide. Um, because that was the medium for which a lot of our physical quill work, our traditional quill work was done. And so to kind of merge that past and present was really, uh, really important to me. I also have um, examples of quill and beadwork that I did prior to this, mostly um, moccasins for my sons um, and, you know, baby items for my boys, um, you know, just to kind of display what quill work looks like after it's been well used and well worn, <laughs> because that's ultimately the point of all of these things, right, is to be used. Um, I have several prints onto paper of, of the quill work. Um, I have it on canvas. And then obviously I have the physical pieces that are inspired. So um, I think I'm going to be quiet now and uh, play the video. Thank you so much. We'll be there, Chi Chi you. Thank you, that was great. And thanks to Crystal. Uh, she's on Smock staff and she did the videotaping and, and got this video that you're going to see in one moment edited together. So thank you.
Hey, welcome back, everybody. That was awesome. I sincerely enjoyed that. Um, this is a good time for us to open it up for questions or just appreciative comments of Autumn's work. Um, we're open for uh, open here for you to join us, whether you want to join us on camera and ask a question, or you just want to pop in from an audio perspective and ask. The floor is yours. Can you hear me? Yes. Oh, hi. Autumn, this is Michelle Curran. Hi, I saw you. Come on. How are you? Oh, I'm fine. It was beautiful. I am in tears. It's so amazing what you're doing. I, I just can't tell you how happy I am for you and how proud I am of you. I mean, I'm really touched. Anyway, love you. I need to go, but love you so much. I love you too. Have a lovely night. Thank you for coming. You are more than welcome. I wish I could see it in person, but it's just to follow the, the complex growth of your mind in, in weaving all of this together is so impressive. Just proud, proud, proud of you. And I knew you when you were a baby girl. <laughs> now a fully formed, developed, and creative, powerful young woman. Love you. Bye-bye. Love you too. Bye. Take care. Bye. Also, mad props to uh, Crystal and Smock and, um, on the whole for, uh, for such great photos. Uh, they're really fantastic. I saw the video. It was just totally amazing. You're welcome. Some, sometimes it's hard. A couple of those, um, I've done this for other shows too. I had to take outside and put on the sidewalk to get like sunlight instead of getting in all the reflections in the studio, how we have it. But they think they turned out pretty good. <laughs> Beautiful. And I'll also, you know, thank you to Smock because it was actually, you know, through um, through grants um, that I received through Smock that I was able to um, actually like get some of the tech uh, to to be able to do some of this work in a way that um, didn't take forever. Um, and you know, I'm just really appreciative of the opportunity that was presented by the organization. And so, Akia, okay, thank you. That's what we uh, exist to do: is to help artists grow and explore new things. Serena, thanks for coming on camera. Did you have something you wanted to ask or share? Yeah, I, I just wanted to say something, but then after, was it Michelle? I was like, oh my God, I don't know. <laughs> I'm gonna, like what I'm gonna say, it just amounts, that was really beautiful, whatever <laughs> you're saying, but um. Yeah, I just wanted to say, I know it's not the same as uh, seen in person, but I really appreciate being able to make it virtually because I'm still trying to understand like the whole digital art world. And it's just um, the story of connecting traditional and, and a, on a digital platform. Uh, yeah, it's, it's amazing. And I like, when people talk about it, it's really hard for me to understand, but this presentation has really helped me understand the connection between it. Um, so yeah, just thank you and it's amazing work. Thank you so much for coming. And yeah, I appreciate that. It's um, it, it's hard, like, yeah, I, I agree with you. And as somebody who's in the digital art world, it's really hard to keep up. <laughs> Uh, on the like just on the tech alone it changes so rapidly uh, and um, you know one of the things though is is like truly inspiring is the ways in which digi digital art is being used really as a medium I mean even NFTs are being used as a medium rather than just as like a like a signing technique 
um, for artwork. And um, yeah, I mean, it's what really like when I was coming onto the NFT scene, I really didn't want to enter into it and felt until I felt like I had something to contribute <laughs> that was original. Um, and so like this for me was a really, a really big part of that. Um, and you know, I mean, there's not a whole lot of things out, out there like this, um, specifically not with like the proof value or like the, the proof or the use value uh, for design generations that are based off of something real um, rather than just being aesthetically good. Yeah, thank you for coming, I appreciate it. I'm just giving a pause so that people feel welcome to ask other questions or... Crystal, did you have anything? that impacted you that you wanted to comment on? I mean, just how much I've loved listening, um, Autumn, to you explaining the pieces and the process, you know, cause you got, you applied for the grants and even through that, I was a little bit confused. Like I, I was excited about everything, but I was like, I still don't quite get it. So like, it's been really helpful to hear you talk about the process and how it's all done. And it is, it's, it's very fascinating. It feels very new. Um, so it's, been really cool to to see the pieces in person and have them in the gallery has been an honor for us. Thank you. I'm, I'm glad it, it has been me. an absolute honor. Yeah, yeah, it has been an absolute honor. My favorite piece is the piece um, of the Dakota 38, um, those faces come out i mean they are they are there they are absolutely speaking to us through history so and i see my internet connection is unstable it's, it must be a thing tonight everybody's having a little bit of a hiccup um i wanted to just mention that if you do get a chance to get to marshall our smock gallery is open in general from Monday through Friday from 8 to 12 and 1 to 4-ish, 4.30-ish. So um, sometimes it's good to call in advance. We have limited staffing. We're still trying to navigate um, keeping our germs away from each other so we can all be healthy and keep going and keep serving 18 counties. Um, so you're welcome to call ahead, uh, but in general, Monday through Friday. And she is showcasing her work through June 17th. So that's Friday the 17th. You have one more week and a half to stop by the gallery and see her work in person. Um, Autumn, where is it going after that? Are you um, like running off with the exhibit to somewhere else? Um, not immediately. Um, I have another... Um a bit going um, up in Brainerd actually at the Crossing Gallery there um, and so that's really exciting um, and I'm yeah working right now on booking the schedule for 2020 honestly um, like as a traveling a bit and so I'm, I'm hoping to not just add more pieces uh, more generative cool work but also to add more physical pieces to a company um, you know because I feel like uh, I feel like that's really where a lot of people really most connect with the work is seeing seeing it come through um, as a physical piece um, you know from the digital design and you know really kind of drives it home for a lot of people so that's really kind of like the next um, the next stage that I'm really going to be working on with it but yeah uh, Crossing Gallery and Brainerd. Awesome great um, this gives me a, just a short moment to mention that Autumn is our last um, artist that will exhibit in the Smock Gallery that is located in its current location. Smock is moving. Um, we don't know where we're moving to yet. We're still in negotiations, but we will be closing our offices in early July. So, um, and we'll still be able to be reached by, you know, email and phone, which is the large majority 
majority of communications that we do with our artists and arts organizations, but we are moving, so we are going dark for a little bit. So we're going out with a bang with Autumn's exhibit in the gallery. So please do catch it if you have a moment to before the 17th of June. Anything else, friends, that we would like to share? Otherwise, I just want to thank Autumn once again for exhibiting in our gallery and making it work. She was a hot commodity just before the Smart Smart Gallery exhibit opened, and we um, she really uh, worked hard to get it to us as quickly as possible so we could get it up and get it showcased. Well, again, thank you so much. It was really it really is an honor to be able to show work. In, in the communities that I'm from, um, you know, because ultimately, ultimately I, I feel in, in the true utilitarian nature of Dakota work that uh, if, if it's not valuable to the community that it comes from, that it's not really valuable at all. <laughs> so it is always an honor to be able to exhibit for people in my local community. And yeah, it's, it's the fact that. Great. Uh, that's all for tonight. Thank you all for joining us. And as I put in the chat, check out our website if you want to watch the video after the fact. Crystal should have that up within a couple of days, maybe even sooner. So. Yeah. Yeah, the video itself will be up probably tomorrow, but the video of this will probably take a little bit of time to get captioning in and then get it up on YouTube. Um, but yeah, the video will go on our Facebook and on our website um, and it'll stay there it doesn't end at the end of her exhibit um so even if you no. missed the exhibit you can still see it yeah yeah so good night everybody and thank you thank you good night take care